Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have seen some problem based on KCL, KVL, nodal mesh, whatever we have studied till now, we have seen some problem based on that. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about the network theorems in which we will discuss superposition theorem, homogeneity principle and some problem based on superposition theorem. Okay. Let's talk about the network theorems. Why we use network theorems? Let us take one complex network in which you have to find the response across any branch. Okay. Now, if you will apply nodal equation in any complex network, then you may get five to six nodes, maybe 10 nodes in any complex network. So it would be difficult for you to solve the five to six equation. Similarly, if you will find the response by using mesh analysis, then you will get 6 to 10 mesh equations which would be very difficult for you to find the response across any branch. So in that case, what we will do, we will apply network theorems and we will solve and we will find the response across that branch. It would be easy to find the response across each branch by using network theorems. So in this tutorial, we will be discussing about superposition theorem. What does superposition theorem states? Say in any linear network with several independent sources acting simultaneously, the response in a particular branch is the algebraic sum of individual response calculating by treating one independent source at a time. Suppose you have given one circuit, this is one of the circuit in which you have to find the current across 4 ohm resistor. Okay, then if you will apply mesh here, then you will get 4 mesh equation because there is 4 loop present. So you will get 4 mesh equation. Also, if you will apply nodal equation, then you will get 3 nodes, right? Means you have to solve three equation so here i will go with superposition theorem what the superposition theorem says the the response in any branch suppose i have to find the current across four ohm resistor then i will take one independent source at a time suppose i am taking 10 volt uh, independent source at a time then i will find first find the current by using 10 volt independent source okay after that i will find the current across this branch by using two ampere current source similarly i will find the value of current across four ohm resistor by using five ampere current source and final i will find the current across four ohm branch by using 20 volt voltage source got it so i will find the response in four ohm resistor considering one independent source at a time and other independent source is not used okay and finally the response in the branch will be the algebraic sum of individual current produced by the individual independent source at a time got it we will solve some problem based on superposition theorem before that let us take one more principle that is known as homogeneity principle okay what does homogeneity principle says in a linear network, if the excitation is multiplied by constant k, then the response in all branch are also multiplied by k. This is applied only in linear network. Similarly, superposition theorem is also applied only in linear network. It is not applied in non-linear network. Got it? So, see the what see what the homogeneity principle says. Suppose this is one kind of network okay in which if you will find the value of current then you will get after finding the value of current you will get current across this will be 1 by 2 1 by 2 and here is 1 ampere you can easily find by using source transformation or by using by applying nodal equation uh, that is not the problem okay Suppose the voltage source is multiplied by four times. Okay, I am multiplying the voltage source the, by four times, then the voltage source will become 16 volt. Got it? 
4 multiplied by 4 that is equal to 16 volt that means if the excitation is multiplied by k times here i am considering k is equal to 4 okay so if the excitation is multiplied by k times then the response in all branch response means the value of current or the value of voltage okay response in all branch are also multiplied by k that means initially 1 ampere current was flowing through 2 ohm resistor when 4 volt voltage source is applied and when 16 volt voltage source is applied then current flowing through this will be 1 multiplied by 4 because excitation is multiplied by 4 times that means response should also multiplied by 4 times so current will be flowing here that is equal to 4 ampere similarly the current will flow here 1 by 2 multiplied by 4 that is equal to 2 ampere and here also 2 ampere this is what the homogeneity principle says let us solve one more problem based on homogeneity principle suppose in this is a linear network okay and input is given as a voltage source and 10 volt voltage source is applied and you are getting 4 ampere current here and 2 ampere current here suppose i am applying 40 volt input voltage then we have to find the i1 and i2 see excitation is multiplied by 4 times got it excitation is multiplied by 4 times that means response should also multiplied by 4 times so initially it was 4 ampere now it will be 4 multiplied by 4 that is equal to 16 ampere similarly this current should be multiplied by 4 ampere that is equal to 8 ampere so i1 is equal to you will get 16 ampere and i2 is equal to 8 ampere okay now let us solve some problem based on superposition theorem i already told you what the superposition theorem states it states that in any linear network with several independent sources acting simultaneously the response in a particular branch is equal to algebraic sum of individual responses calculated by treating one independent source at a time okay we have to treat one independent source at a time so let us solve this circuit by using superposition theorem in this circuit we have to find the value of current i flowing through 4 ohm resistor okay now according to superposition theorem i am taking first 6 volt at a time how how to remove the sources first we will see how to remove the sources so see this note ideal voltage source should be replaced by short circuited and ideal current source should be replaced by open circuited similarly if there is dependent source present in the circuit then we have to leave it as it is we don't have to remove that dependent sources okay so i am considering first 6 volt sources so this current source will be removed what i told you that ideal current source should be replaced by open circuited so it will be open circuited now we have to find the value of i1 i1 this 8 ohm and 4 ohm are connected in series that means i1 will be given by 6 by 8 plus 4 that is equal to 1 by 2 ampere now take 3 ampere current source and short circuit the voltage source why because ideal voltage source should be short circuited so i am short circuiting the voltage source and taking 3 ampere current source i have to find the current i2 this is 8 ohm this is 4 ohm now you can use current division rule by uh, in order to find the i2 i2 is given by these 8 and 4 ohm are connected in parallel with 3 ampere current source so i2 is given by total current that is equal to 3 ampere multiplied by the impedance of other branch that is equal to 8 by total resistance okay 8 plus 4 that is equal to 12 so you will get 2 ampere got it now you have i1 you have i2 now see the direction of i1 and i2 i1 is flowing 
in downward direction this is the direction of i1 and i2 is also flowing in downward direction that means these two must be added algebraically that is equal to 1 by 2 plus 2 that is equal to 2.5 ampere so the answer would be 2.5 ampere let us verify by using nodal method so we get i is equal to 2.5 ampere now i will verify by using nodal method so that i can able to know whether the whether we are applying superposition theorem correctly or not see there is only one node take it as a v and take it as a reference 0 volt at node v i already explained you how to apply the nodal equation you have to assume that this v is at higher potential and current is flowing from higher potential to lower potential let us suppose this is i1 this is i2 and i3 is already flowing no problem so apply nodal at v you will get i1 plus i2 this 3 ampere current source is entering at node that means i will take as a negative is equal to 0 now i1 can be replaced by in terms of potential that is v and 6 volt that is given by v minus 6 upon higher potential minus lower potential upon 8 similarly i2 can be replaced by higher potential minus lower potential upon 4 that is equal to v minus 0 upon 4 is equal to 3 take v as a common 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4 is equal to 3 plus 3 by 4 now find v you will get 3 v by 8 is equal to 15 by 4 so v is equal to 15 into 2 by 3 that is equal to 10 volt hence current i i equal to i2 will be 10 by 4 that is equal to 2.5 ampere we are getting same current by using nodal also so we have applied superposition correctly okay let us solve some is problem this uh, this is asked in 2012 we have to find the response in 2 ohm branch okay so here also 2 volt source 1 1 ampere current source and 1 volt voltage source is connected okay first i will consider this 1 volt sources and current source is open circuited and this 2 volt source is short circuited so the circuit will look like this is 1 volt okay now see this is we balanced with a stone bridge that means the current flowing through this will be zero hence i will get i1 is equal to zero by considering one vo one volt voltage source at a time now i will take one ampere current source and i will short circuit one volt source and two volt source then i will get the circuit like this in this case also the bridge is balanced and you will get 0 ampere current flowing through this so i2 is equal to 0 ampere now consider this 2 volt source and open circuit this current source and 1 volt short circuit this 1 volt source then you will get circuit like this considering 2 volt sources and open circuited this current source and 1 volt source short circuited you will get the circuit like this stretch this two volts sources with uh, two ohm resistance like this and this one ohm take it as a inside you will get the circuit like this this is also a balanced with stone bridge so this one ohm resistor is of no value and you will get i3 is equal to two parallel in two that is that will give you one and total is two upon 
2 plus 1 that is equal to 2 by 3 ampere so overall the current i is equal to algebraic sum of all the current by, uh, produced by individual sources so these two sources one volt sources and one ampere current source produces zero ampere current so finally the current will be i is equal to i3 is equal to 2 by 3 ampere see this circuit this is a linear network in which the value of v1 v2 and i is given if v1 is equal to 2 volt and v2 is equal to 0 volt then i am getting i is equal to 0.5 ampere similarly if v2 is equal to 5 volt and v1 is equal to 0 volt then i am getting i is equal to 1 ampere by seeing this table you can conclude that the current produced that is 0.5 ampere and 1 ampere is produced by individual voltage sources treated one independent sources at a time from this table you can see that every time one voltage source is connected that means when v1 is equal to 2 volt v2 is not connected and i we are getting i is equal to 0.5 ampere similarly when v1 is 0 volt then v2 is connected and we are getting i is equal to 1 ampere that means superposition theorem is applied here so the question a we have to find if v1 is equal to 10 volt and v2 is equal to minus 4 5 volt then what i will get c if v1 is equal to 10 volt and v2 is equal to 0 volt then how much will i get see v1 is equal to 2 volt then i am getting in absence of v2 if v1 is equal to 2 volt then i am getting 0.5 ampere of current so in absence of v2 if v1 is applied 10 volt then i will get 5 times of 0.5 ampere according to homogeneity principle that i will get 2.5 ampere okay similarly if v2 is equal to minus 5 volt and v1 is equal to 0 volt then i will get see if v2 is equal to 5 volt i is equal to 1 ampere so if v2 is equal to minus 5 volt i is equal to minus 1 ampere so overall both v1 and v2 is applied then i will get the algebraic sum of this current that is equal to 2.5 minus 1 equal to 1.5 ampere that is the answer take this circuit this is this has been asked in IES 2011 we have to find the current across 4 ohm resistor by using superposition why superposition is used see in this circuit the value of V is not given okay so if you will apply nodal then you can't able to find the response why because the value of V is not given so if you will apply superposition then see what is going to happen suppose i will take v at a time and current both the current source is left open okay then i will get circuit like this plus minus v this is open circuited this is open circuited finally this is not connected to the circuit negative terminal of the voltage source is not connected to this that means current i will be i1 is equal to 0 ampere so 0 ampere current produced by this voltage source so no matter what is the value of voltage source this is not going to produce any current okay in 4 ohm resistor now take 1 ampere current source at a time then you will get this is 12 this is 8 4 1 ampere this current source is open circuited so it is of no use and this voltage source is short circuited so this is something like this
so you can see that this one ampere current source is in parallel with this 12 ohm and this 12 ohm so i2 will be divide equally since impedance offered by resistance offered by both the branches are equal so i2 is equal to current division rule that is equal to total current multiplied by resistance of opposite branch that is 12 upon total resistance that is 24 you will get 0 0.5 ampere so i2 is equal to 0 0.5 ampere i1 i have got 0 ampere now take 3 ampere current source only then 1 ampere current source will be left open and voltage source will be short circuited then the circuit will look like this is 12 this is 8 4 ampere this is my i3 3 ampere this is short circuit again you will get two parallel branch in parallel with this current source so i3 is given by current division rule that is equal to total current multiplied by opposite branch resistance that is 8 upon total resistance is equal to 24 you will get 1 ampere so final algebraic sum or i is equal to what i1 plus i2 plus i3 that is algebraic sum you will get finally 1.5 ampere now see the last problem in this problem two independent sources are connected one is voltage source and another one is the 3 ampere current source and one dependent source is connected so i already told you that in super, while applying superposition theorem you have to consider only one source at a time and other source has left open like in current source it is it get open circuited and voltage source it get short circuited but dependent source is left as it is in the circuit it is not changed okay now find ix by superposition theorem so i will consider first 10 volt voltage source and i will open circuit 3 ampere current source so i am getting so i will get 10 volt in series with 2 3 now apply kvl i will move from here to here so minus 10 plus 3 ix plus 2 ix is equal to 0 hence i will get ix is equal to 2 ampere okay ix1 is equal to 2 ampere take it as a ix1 now take 3 ampere current source and short circuit the voltage source you have to find ix2 apply nodal here v by 2 minus 3 plus v minus 2 ix2 by 1 is equal to 0 now replace ix2 is equal to minus v by 2 see ix2 is flowing opposite to this higher potential that means this will be in negative so ix2 is equal to minus v by 2 put it here you will get v is equal to 1.2 volt hence ix2 is equal to minus 1.2 by 2 that is equal to minus 0 0.6 ampere so total current ix is equal to ix1 plus ix2 that you will get 2 minus 0 0.6 that is equal to 1.4 ampere so that's all about this lecture in the next tutorial we will see thevenin theorem if you guys are having any problem then you can join our facebook group
and ask the query for new updates you can subscribe to this channel thank you